Craig, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Let me ask, how can satellite technology help achieve the SDG4 goals? SDG4 goals, just for those that don't know, um, Sustainable Development Goal 4, one of 17 Sustainable Development Goals that the uh, UN announced in 2015, and they plan to um, complete by 2030. Unfortunately, we've only, we've only achieved 15% overall, and we're halfway through the 15-year period. One way it could do it, well, let me explain, is 2.6 billion people unconnected at the moment, which is roughly 33% of the population, of the world population. There's also 263 million children and youths, according to UNESCO's 2018 report, not, connect, uh, not attending school. What we could do with the latest in low Earth orbit satellite technology is you can now have the potential to connect directly from the satellite to a standard mobile phone. By doing this, we can then provide online learning to those 263 million children and youths that haven't got education. And it's also um, a way of connecting up the 2.6 billion which haven't got internet connectivity so far. So it's, it's benefiting both primarily on focusing on the SDG4 goal. So you mentioned the, uh, the low Earth orbit satellite technology. Yeah. Um, what's different about that? Well, there's low Earth orbit satellites, there's two, I mean, the way it's not, you'd normally connect at the moment is you, with a terminal unit, which is a device on the ground that communicates with the satellite, and then you can connect your computer to that terminal unit. Now, there's a new technology whereby you can connect a smartphone directly to the, to the low Earth orbit satellite. Now, this is not to be confused with um, traditional satellite phones, which are a specialist handset which communicate with a satellite. This is a standard, standard mobile phone. So if you can connect anywhere to a standard mobile phone and even use recycled ones, um, you know, refurbished ones, I mean, who hasn't got a smartphone lying around their drawer at home? If we could redistribute those, there were apps already in existence to help provide education to the developing world. It's just at the moment, like I said, there's 2.6 billion people not connected. So this director handset te uh, connectivity to LEO satellites is a way which we could A, connect those 2.6 billion and B, provide education to those um, those without education, the 263 million I mentioned. Well, that's, yeah, and that, that's quite a shocking number, isn't it, really? Mm. How can we make use, do you think, of of recycling technology or recycled technology to help bring that education to those children? Right, or well, we could use technology that we've just got lying around that's not the latest phone that we don't use that we've got lying in our drawers. Um, there's also a, another, another, um, another thing we could do is we could bring, so not only can we provide education to that smartphone, to people that need it, maybe they're a displaced refugee or they're in a remote location, so they, they can then get direct education to that phone. But we can also, if we use a box like this, for instance, with it, this is just a solar panel and a box, but if we put in those repurposed, recycled, reused mobile phones into the box and we can tether to that box, so this could go on top of a building in a community that hasn't got internet, uh, and then we can, we can access that using, again, using re recycled technology. It doesn't just have to be phones. So this could be the, the unit you tether to. So it's community Wi-Fi. You could, I mean, you could tether using an old Windows XP computer, for instance, that you may have lying around at home. You can put open source software on, which is free community developed secure software, which some governments and schools around the world actually use on their computer systems. You can install that on recycled hardware, and that could be distributed, thus helping with sustainability, because we're not sending things to landfill. And, th and that's, you sort of asked the next question, really, um, about making this sustainable. I, I guess, as you mentioned, we've all got a lot of redundant technology lying yeah, around in our houses, yeah, but it yeah. can be reused and then constantly reused from that point. Yeah, I mean, I've got a computer, which I used to, I used to uh, teach at a further education college. You won't mention which one, but I saw they had a, <laughs> they were chucking out a load of um, Windows XP computers, and I thought, nothing wrong with that. So I, with their permission, I <laughs> took one home, took off the, the, uh, the Windows XP, put on um, 
some open source software, the operating system, and the um, and the and some download word processing. And basically, I ran a business for, with it for five years. Mm. Did tax returns a lot. Fine. Don't even need an antivirus because it's so secure. Wow. Fine. So it's extending the half life exactly. of technology yeah, as well, which is which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and aside from the obvious sort of communication benefits, what do you think would be the main advantages of connecting? those 263 million children that you mentioned? The alternative, which they may face, I mean, imagine you didn't get an education or I didn't get an education. Um, child, you could end up with in child labor or child marriage. If we can give people an education, yeah. it, it's gonna help their life chances. They've, everyone's got dreams, um, you know. Yeah, it's a little bit of hope. It's, yeah, it's, it? it's yeah. hope basically. Yeah. It does just not, it's just not right that we've got a um, we've had an education, we've got life opportunity. Mm. Why why haven't they? It's no. just not right. I know you're absolutely right. Um, mm. And of course, a lot of the barriers to the solutions for these is always built around cost. Mm. Um, do you know of any funding models that we could use to pay, for example, the satellite operators to access? Yeah, well, that's because that's um, that's a good point because using at the, at the moment, a lot, the reason a lot of these 2.6 million, 2.6 billion even, aren't connected is because it's not economic to put a traditional ground-based cellular phone system into their locality. So by using satellites, we can do that. But obviously, the satellite companies, there's a couple companies which have perfected this technology, whereby the cell, cell tower, which is the, the thing that your phone communicates with, yeah. is basically in, in space. A couple of companies developed this, but they're obviously commercial companies. So maybe setting up a charity or charity funding, so you contribute to that, and they sponsor they sponsor the, the, the connectivity to to um, to allow connectivity for these people in remote locations. I mean, there is a there is a initiative called Project Giga where they're trying to use satellite mapping and. AI to try and work out how many schools there are because they don't actually know that yet in remote locations. But and they're trying to provide internet to everyone in every community. But even if they achieve that, not everyone is near a school. People are in really remote locations. So by using satellite technology, you can um, can help this. And like I say, it could be done on a charity model. It could be done maybe at a UN level where they set up what's known as an MVNO, which is Mobile Virtual Network Operator. What this is, is basically, if, uh, if you, um, your supermarket provides um, phone access, broadband, and this sort of thing at the moment, you, but your, your supermarket, you may be paying for, you know, mobile internet. They don't, they don't own a the network. They're basically the, the middleman, so you pay them. So imagine, for instance, the UN sets something like that up, to help achieve their goals. So governments that can contribute to it, and then they pay the satellite companies. There's various funding models we, we could use. So the, the problem has been identified, the solution has been repurposed and can be delivered, mm. the funding is possible. Yeah. It sounds like you've got uh, answered the question that you posed at the start of this talk. Mm. Craig Miles, it's been an absolute pleasure, and I hope this is an idea that everybody finds worth spreading. Thank you. Thank you.